And uh, how does the screen look? Uh, uh, it looks like a screen. Yeah, <laughs> that's good for me. <laughs> Thanks for joining again, Diverter. Thanks, Labra Huddle. Appreciate you guys' time. Uh, and, I, and actually, I got caught up trying to figure out if I could actually even do a post mix spend using tools with without a because this is a wallet that I've never used before and I've never used Sparrow Wallet to do a post mix spend. Oh uh, yeah. Do what? Do I actually need to have a Paynim contact set no. up already? No. See, um, it's the basically it's the same as Samurai. It's just going to default to the stone wall. Um, which is a single person spend. It just looks like um, a, a coin join on chain. So, I see. yeah, so it'll just be the regular stone wall. Now, you could um, then connect with someone and do, you know, the same, the same, the, the, the transaction would look exactly the same, uh, which is the entire point. But, you know, right. we can get into that, but no, you won't need anything. Uh, all right. Well, I wanted to share. Um, this is that same UTXO from the previous video. Oh, wow. I'm, it's already got 36. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I had it turned off for a while. I'm already recording. So, uh, okay. Uh, it's, this is, this is that one. And then I added some other ones cause it sounded like, um, we might need multiple UTXOs to pull this off. I, I was hoping to, before we got, we would get into the post mix tools just to uh, do a bit of a dive into the um, the coin join transactions that are happening here. So, like like you already mentioned, there's been 36 or so with that UTXO, mm -hmm. uh, and this is what each one of those transactions looks like. Um, f I know that that's been explained in other tutorials before, but um, this is one of the things that I was hoping to get across in that other video that uh, every every coin join transaction is um, five UTX goes going into a transaction with an equal amount of UTX goes going back to each of those wallets. So uh, yeah. for, for the, I've, I've heard other folks um, share that they're concerned that a UTXO isn't going to come back. Uh, so I wanted yeah. to show what one of those transactions looks like. I, I thought about that after we stopped the, the first and two, like I, I had made a point to myself to make sure to, to, to make that point that, um, that this is a completely non-custodial thing. And then we did the whole video and I <laughs> completely didn't do it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I feel like confuses people a lot of times because, um, the wording we use around this stuff, like, you know, what people say was, you know, um, I'm going to go into Whirlpool, you know, you send the sats into Whirlpool and, you know, sats are getting Whirlpool and then, and then they're coming back out. So it, it sounds like these things are like going, getting sent to another service or they're going to another place or doing something else. And that couldn't be further from the truth. All this is, is a very simple, it's a simple, um, self spend. You're spending to yourself. That's all it is. It's completely non-custodial. Um, the only difference in this transaction is you have a coordinator, um, which is the Whirlpool coordinator, that is uh, taking a single input from five different wallets. Um, and then they're, all that's happening is all five of those wallets are just self-spending right back to each other. So all this is really doing is just signing the transaction. Nothing ever leaves your wallet. There is no, no, at no point is custody lost. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's one thing that I really wanted to go over. Because, you know, when you hear people say, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sending some sats into Whirlpool, it's just, it, it conjures up this thing in your mind. Like, you know, it makes you feel like these, these, um, these UTXOs are not actually still in your wallet, but they are. Yeah, great. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> there's no way we could have really shown this part of the no. transaction because we didn't have the, that transaction didn't confirm yeah. until like a, a long time afterwards. Uh, and then, so you you brought up the point on the on the previous video that um, one of the at least one of those UTXOs that's going in is a fresh UTXO that hasn't that's coming in out of uh, premix. And that's the uh, one that's paying for the mining fee in each of those different 36 transactions that's happened. Yeah. In Whirlpool, it's actually, it's a, it's a minimum of two. It can be either two or three, um, of the, the UTXOs on the input side have to come from fresh liquidity. It's a minimum of two. 
Uh, but the way that that's determined, basic, very basically, the way that's determined is by minor fee. So the whole idea here um, with Whirlpool is what they try to do is they try to keep these transactions from accidentally getting stuck uh, in, a, in a quick fee spike. So they'll make sure that at least two fresh UTXOs are coming and that those two fresh UTXOs have at least paid enough in minor fees that this transaction won't get stuck. And if that doesn't happen in those two uh, in two inputs, then uh, the coordinator will take a third fresh input and in those cases only use two remixers. Um, but I think if you hover over those inputs there, and again, Craig, uh, shout out to Craig Rog, this, this stuff is amazing to be able to look at it. Okay, so that one is a remixer because you see it says it's an input of 1 million sats even. So that's a remixer. What's the next one? Next one's another remixer right there. Okay, remixer again. Now, there you see this guy is one of the fresh uh, that's coming in. This is the fresh liquidity. You see that's got 1 million and then it's got 302 sats. That's part of the minor fee. And then that last one should be the same thing. Yep, same thing. So those are two, those are your two fresh inputs right there. So they're going to be paying the minor fees. Those other three uh, remixers are just just for the ride, providing liquidity, getting an increase in privacy completely for free, um, as the minor fee is is paid by those fresh remixers. It's really good uh, uh, screen right here. It's amazing. Yeah, like I said before, I, I really appreciate all of the information that's displayed here i know it's not useful in a mobile scenario but mm -hmm. for, for yeah. somebody who's looking to, to learn about this stuff it's it's pretty neat to see all of it happening the 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 fact that uh there's um that it's requiring two fresh utxos going into this really speaks to the demand that's happening when it comes to coin joining in in these different yeah. um these different pools yeah and see this is this is a point not to hijack this whole thing, but this, this is a point um, that's that's so often overlooked, um, what we would call structural liquidity enforcement. This is, this is just a highly underrated feature of Whirlpool. It has a structural liquidity enforcement. So what that means very basically is it cannot be the same people over and over and over mixing with each other. Um, and, and the reason that that's important is you, you're forcing this fresh liquidity um, to come into these mixes and you're picking remixers at random from all of the pool of, of, of free riders that are out there. Um, and so what that ensures is that instead of being, for example, on like a timer where this mix is just going to trigger every hour. All right, as long as you have enough liquidity every hour, this mix is going to trigger. The problem with, with that alone is that you, it could just be the same people over and over and over again, just remixing with each other. So, I mean, technically, I guess you could say you have that in onset, but in reality, you're really not bringing any, any you're not forcing fresh liquidity to keep on coming in. Whirlpool ha has those structural liquidity enforcements, so it's a, it's a very underrated feature. But yes, it definitely, um, there is no shortage of liquidity these days in, in Whirlpool. That's one of, the, one of the great features. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, and then before we move on to the post-mix spending tools here, uh, I just wanted to, again, just to wrap up that previous um, conversation that we had. Um, you could also, and this is what I've been doing with my main setup here, is uh, in the mix two por uh, section here, you can have another instance of Sparrow Wallet open with a, with a cold storage. So in this case, uh, because we're um, mixing, it, this has to be a hot wallet. Uh, I do have, a, you know, you can have a cold storage set up to where, um, and it's another instance where it's, it's just got your, um, where it can only see your receive addresses here. So then you would mix to that. You'd, you could also select how often those mixes would happen here. Uh, so you can pick a minimum amount of mixes. You pick your wallet here. Um, and then the index range, I think this is, yeah, this is where it's happening. Uh, can you explain that? I don't, I don't have the words for this. Um, well, the mix to, 
first of all, it's uh, amazing that it's implemented this easily. Um, this is the, the direct to cold storage thing that is currently available in Samurai, but only as a command line uh, tool using the CLI. So this makes it super easy. Like you said, just set you up you know, a cold storage solution, like with your passport or however you want to do it. Um, and then you click click on that mix too. It's going to ask you for uh, basically just an XPUB. Um, so you pull the XPUB from whatever your uh, 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 cold storage solution is, pop that in there, and then it's going to ask you for a number of mixes. Um, so say you say you choose five mixes, um, as you said, then that means it's going to do a minimum of five mixes. So the cool, one of the cool things about the Whirlpool mix to cold storage is you don't actually know if it's going to go on that fifth mix. You pick five mixes, it has to do a minimum of five. Once it gets to that number, then it 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 adds a, a, a bit of um, it adds a little something extra, a bit of randomness to that. So it's not it's not just every time your wallet hits five mixes, it's going to send that UTXO. It, I don't want to get too in the weeds on it, but but it basically um, once you get to those five mixes, from that point on, there is a chance that the next mix is going to get sent to cold storage. Um, as far as the index goes, I mean, I mean, most of the time, um, you're basically probably going to be starting on a fresh cold storage wallet. I, I would assume if you're going to start sending mixed outputs to it. Um, but even if you're not, the the Whirlpool CLI, um, I believe, don't quote me 100% on this, but I believe th this uses the odd number indexes in your wallet. So like it's going to send to the number one address, the number three address, the number five address, so on and so forth. Oh, that um, just adds but, more randomness, right? Yeah, yeah. A a well, a it's actually, um, as far as I understand, it's designed that way so as to not interfere with your mobile mixing. So if you're using Samurai mobile mixing, the mobile mm -hmm. uh, actually sends to the even indexes. So if you're mixing with your phone and you're mixing with your computer, it doesn't, you know, cause a cause an issue. Um, where two, that's my understanding where two of it. So those would go into the same address. Right. You tr it's, it's all about trying to prevent address reuse. That's the whole shebang right there is just not trying to send to the same address twice. Um, but, you know, again, all this stuff, I mean, we're kind of going into it here. Truth be told, all this is is really kind of the heavy lifting is done by the wallet. It's very, very well implemented um, as a quote unquote noob user. Um, all you would really know, need to know, it's going to be very plain for you to see on Sparrow here. It's going to walk you through the steps. Um, it's very easy to, to obtain your XPUB um, from this Sparrow solution because it displays everything so well. It, it's, it's a very, very simple procedure. If somebody is interested, though, you've got a blog write up on what uh, if like I actually did the one that you wrote up about how to cold storage mixing in with uh, Samurai. Uh, yeah, it was with the CLI. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like hard, but it was intimidating. So <laughs> sure, so of course, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but that's you've got it on you know, your website, right? You've got it on your blog. Yes. Oh, what is what's yes. that? Uh, um, it's you can find it. It's at uh, diverter dot host your own dot tools, um, and you can just there links in my Twitter profile um, if anybody want, wants to check that out. Um, and that's a really good write up that you've got in there on um, mixing to cold storage using Samurai. So I, I appreciate yeah, that. It's a pretty cool feature. Like you said, though, it's just right now it being command line is is pretty intimidating. So this this right here being implemented is just it's uh, I love it. Yeah, it's a it's a beast of a setup here. Uh, okay, let's jump over to the um, to the post mix spending tools. I actually don't know what to do from here, so you're gonna have to, have to do this <laughs> one if you don't mind. Okay, well, um, I, I it should just be um, go. You're in the post mix tab right there, so just hit the send over on this on the left hand side of the screen. Your send tab over there. Uh, in the blue, oh, that, just the yeah, yeah, just the the send. Not that not that one. Go go oh, back. Okay. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just in the send tab in general. Okay. Text, so, okay. There you go. There we go. Okay. So now, um, do you have an address to send to? I, I'm assuming you've got one. Right, or you can just uh, pull we'll, one from your. We'll just use the deposit. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Just pull one from receive. there. There we okay. go. All right. So click that in the pay to. 
All right, now we've got what one million sat and then three one hundred thousand sats. So we've got like one point three million sats in there. Yeah, is that right? Okay, so um, you see at the bottom there where it says optimize efficiency and privacy. Um, yes. On the bottom left of your screen. Okay, click on that little question mark right there. Next to there we go. Does that I give you anything? Okay, well, you can just hover over the privacy then. There we go. Hover over the privacy part on that tab. All right. Now it says um, higher entropy transactions that I can't read it because your name's in the way. <laughs> what does it say there? That yeah, reduce probability in blockchain analysis. There you go. Okay. So what this is talking about is what's called Stonewall. Um, Stonewall it was implemented in Samurai, and that is the default spending mechanism in Samurai Wallet. So if you um, just go to spend by default, uh, it will use uh, what's called a Stonewall spending algorithm. Now, what that does is it will select multiple inputs uh, on the from your from your wallet on the input side, um, and it will always output you four outputs so instead of a regular bitcoin spend if anybody's you've done regular bitcoin spends um if the amount that you're trying to send is more than one single utxo then your wallet will grab two utxos for example and then it will send um your amount to the address you want to send to and then your change will come back to you so you'll have two inputs and two outputs um, or you may have one input and two outputs, but you always have your send address and your change address. Um, so all those transactions based on blockchain analysis heuristics um, are, are very easily traced. So that's those are what we would call deterministic spins. Um, there's basically a 100% certainty that they can follow which one is the spend and which one is the change. Um, most of the time, it's very easy. So what a stone wall aims to do is it will, it's going to have four outputs on your output side always. Um, your spend will be whatever the amount is that you spend, and then the stone wall algorithm is also going to include one uh, uh, additional output of that same exact amount, and that's going to be basically a decoy spend. Um, your other two outputs are going to be change transactions that's all going back to your wallet so again all this is non-custodial there's no funny business going on here all that it's doing is constructing the transaction in a way that when a blockchain uh, surveillance company comes and tries to figure out what's going on here it, it's much much harder for them to easily determine what exactly is happening um in addition to that the the whole point of this thing is that there is a second spend it's called a Stonewall X2. Now, this transaction is an actual two-person coin join. So you and me, for example, could get together and use, um, well, you can either do it in person or you can do it online using the Tor communications layer called Soraban. And very basically, all that would happen is uh, the wallet would, my wallet would use one input from me you would uh, add an input as well and we would construct a transaction together now the whole point of this thing though is both of those spins the stonewall and the stonewall x2 on chain are going to look identical there's no telling them apart so that's very important because then when a blockchain analyst comes to look at this transaction there is no way to be able to definitively say whether this is a single party spend or whether this is actually two people constructing a spend here. That's crucial because it throws their entire uh, their entire analysis. It throws a monkey wrench in the whole thing. Now, when you they try to trace backwards, am I following one person or am I following two? Which change went to which wallet? So it's just adding doubt. That's the whole point. Um. Now, there are very specific rules. This is the last part that's very important to this. There are specific rules that have to be met in order for this spin to be able to be done. One of those rules is that you must spend a little bit less than half of the amount of Bitcoin that you have in your wallet. And the reason for that is, like I said, when you put in your spend amount, 
the wallet is going to construct another identical decoy spend. So um, it's important that you have a, a little bit over double whatever the amount you want to spend in your wallet as a total. And we can go over that here in, here in a second. The second thing that's important is uh, the wallet will not construct these trans cannot construct this transaction um, if any of the inputs in your wallet have already been seen together in another transaction. Mm. Now, the reason the reason that's important is obviously it, it, it if that was the case, if it was just using uh, inputs that had already been used in other transactions together, then it makes it much easier for these surveillance companies to figure it out. But when you're using like we are right here post mix spins none of these utxos will ever have been in the same mix with each other that structure that structural liquidity enforcement won't allow it um, the whirlpool coordinator won't allow these utxos to be in the same mix together so it's very easy to get um, this transaction to be able to be constructed using purely post mix utxos that's ideal so we've got 1.3 million stats in here so in the amount uh, part up there let's throw um let's say 600 sats 600,000 sats all right uh now it's gonna all uh, automatically select the privacy for you down there as you can see um mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like that's enough okay so let's drop it down to 500,000 sats i think it's probably because one of those is actually in a mix right now and oh like is that what transactions going through in post mix Okay, oh, that might, it be, might it be the worst one too. It might be the mil millions that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, well, well, we can do a really low one then. Just do a hundred thousand sat spin. See if it does that. There we go. Okay. So. All right. What's happening over here? This is a this is a crazy now, looking transaction. This is what you were describing right. a second ago. <laughs> That's exactly right. So now here we go. This is a stone wall. All right. So, what you can see. Um, on the left side is you, it's going to be pulling three UTXOs to construct this transaction. Now, you you have a hundred thousand sat UTXOs. I, I'm assuming it's it's not going to be pulling the million sat one because, like you said, it's confirming right now. Um, yeah. So, so what it, what's going to be happening here? Like I said, you're spending a hundred thousand sats. So if you look on the output side over there. You see your one up at the top says test spend because that's what you labeled it up there. All right. So that's yeah. 100,000 because that's what you put in the amount. Now look right so below it. So this is the amount that's going to. That address. is your spend. That's correct. That's your spend. Now the one right below it. And you see Craig put in the cool little icons there. You see the little masks over there. Yeah. Okay. So th this, this is your twin decoy spend. So you can see, again, it's another 100,000 sats. Right, so you've got a, your spins going, then that's your decoy. These other two down here are just the change that are coming back to your wallet. So one of them's going to be ninety nine thousand. The other one's going to be, well, I guess it is pulling the millions that one. <laughs> okay, so those are the change, right? So again, very basically, your spend at the top that's going wherever it is that you're spending it to, and that could be you know any address anywhere. Um, it doesn't have to be a samurai user. It doesn't have to be a sparrow user. It could be anybody. So that's your spend. That's going to be going out of your wallet. These other three are going to be coming right oh, back into says, your uh, wallet. It even says fake mix there in that little. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically what this is. This is a fake coin join. Um, and again, the purpose of it is is knowing that there is an actual transaction that looks identical to this. That is a real coin join. That's the Stonewall X2. Because both of these exist, when a surveillance company looks at this transaction, it is impossible for them to know whether out of those three inputs over there, did they all three come from the same wallet or is this an actual two-person coin join? That's crucial. So this breakdown right here is, is, is great. It's amazing that he put this in here. But as you can see, you didn't have to do anything in order to uh, initiate this being chosen it's by default it's going to try to choose this privacy mix so as long as you have utxos in your wallet that meet the conditions basically you're spending less than half of your wallet and they've never been in a transaction before together very basically 
if you have UTXOs that meet those conditions, this wallet is going to automatically construct one of these fake UTXOs, or I'm sorry, fake transactions, and, and try to add a little deniability, a little bit of doubt. Beautiful. Okay, and then you, and then finally down here, we've got the fee. Okay, yeah, so yeah. then then you hit create transaction here. Uh, you've got the opportunity again to review what's going on with um, wh where those sats are going. Uh, it offers some details here. This is uh, probably not what we're looking for. Mostly looking for this. Okay, yeah. and then and then you hit uh, finalize transaction for signing, and then you get to sign the transaction, and then you hit broadcast, and then we wait a little bit of time. Uh, I don't think you guys saw the little uh, conf uh, the little um, notifications pop up on, on my computer here. So it does Sparrow Wallet does show some notifications that uh, the transaction is being processed. All right, head back into the wallet. We should be able to already see the unconfirmed UTXOs, right? In your post mix. Okay, so yeah, you'll see there. You've got now unconfirmed. You've got a ninety nine thousand four hundred ninety three set UTXO there on the bottom. And you've got 899,493 up there at the top. So, um, and then that one 100,000 that's unconfirmed, that, that was your decoy spend. Now, if you wanted to make, with this wallet set up right here, if you wanted to make, if you wanted to do another Stonewall spend right now, you wouldn't be able to do that. And the reason is, you have three of the four UTXOs that are contained in this wallet were just seen in a transaction together. So the wallet is not going to be able to construct another one. You see what I'm saying? So it has to have and at who's least... who's managing that? Is it Sparrow Wallet that manages that in the background? It's, yeah, it's the spending algorithm, yeah. The spending out the code is doing the heavy lifting for you. This algorithm yeah. is going to be checking all that for you. Um, so, you know, again, most of this stuff is is default. That's the good thing about sparrow and samurai is is essentially what they do is they try to put up really high like guardrails to try to prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot and they try to put on good privacy by default without you having to do anything this wallet is going to try to make the most private spins that it can so it's really powerful that's great appreciate super appreciate the explanation here are there there's no other tools here that we could use um in, without um having a partner right uh no you would have to uh, you could actually do a stonewall um x2 of course with any of these if you had a partner you could you could just pull that single utxo um, the wallet would pull it and combine it with the utxo from your partner depending on the amount you're spending of course um so there's still plenty that you could do. One last thing I will say here, though, is a lot of people start to worry now because now you have an unequal amount UTXOs. You've got two unequal amount UTXOs in your Postmix wallet. So those two unequal amount UTXOs and even that one equal amount UTXO there will not be eligible for free remixing now. So they can't right. just go right back into mixing. And now... A lot of people freak out about this and, and immediately want to get that change back into Whirlpool so they can get back all this stuff back to mixing and get their post-mix all to be uneven amounts. That's fine if you want to do it that way, but the wallet is going to now um, automatically try to prioritize using these change um, out uh, UTXOs in future spins. And so if you're able to do future um, Kahoot's transactions, as they're known, Stonewall X2, um, use, you know, using another partner, or if you get more UTXOs in here and you do additional Stonewalls, the wallet's going to try to use these transactions, these UTXOs that are already changed UTXOs. It's going to try to prioritize those. So if you can do that and make four, five, six Stonewall, Stonewall X2 transactions, what, what ends up happening is you end up building this big web on chain of just jumbled mess that these surveillance companies just cannot make heads or tails of. There's no way to definitively say this is what's going on here. It's nothing like a regular deterministic transaction. So the more of those you can do in succession, the bigger this web begins to be. 
Oh, I mean, one thing you wouldn't want to do is to put all to put all of these UTXOs into one UTXO and try to mix it because then you're doxing this this bend, right? That is absolutely correct. That's right. So you know, whenever you take over and start doing manual stuff, when you start selecting UTXOs manually, that's when a lot of the error prone stuff happens because the wallet by default is going to do everything it can to try to prevent you from doing that. Um, you know, from, from, from doing something that's going to harm your privacy. But you could now, for example, take that 899,000 UTXO, select it by itself, and send it back into Whirlpool and get it to come back out on the other side with freshly mixed UTXOs. That's perfectly acceptable. Yep. Awesome. I, what, is there anything else we can cover on this? Lavra, is there anything that... Uh... Uh, that might come up as a question that you can think of? Not really. I was going to say that it, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah. is cool. I mean, when you really it, get into it. Yeah, it takes away the human factor, the human error. So it does everything for you. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a big yeah. deal. And these guys, Craig and, and the Samurai guys, I know have... I know I've, I've spoken to them, you know, quite a bit privately, and I and I know these guys really, really believe that when you get into, quote unquote, blaming the users um, for something that's going wrong, then you're headed down the wrong path. I, I know Craig nor the Samurai team, either one, are in the habit of trying to blame blame users. So the only way you can really do it is to try to automate and default away as much as possible. So uh, they've run, they've done a great job. Wonderful. I, I super appreciate your time, Diverter. Thank you. That was uh, two different uh, times that you did this, so I appreciate you hanging out with us for a little while. Oh, no problem, man. I'm glad you all are making these videos, getting them out there. It's a, it's a very powerful tool, and, and it only becomes more powerful the more people that use it. So I appreciate you all. Yeah, I, I, I really do uh, enjoy Sparrow Wallet. It's taken over as my favorite, uh, especially uh, desktop wallet, and I'll probably be doing some more of these um probably something on multi-sig uh, in the future. But uh, thanks for your time, Diverter. Thanks for your time, Labra. I appreciate it. And that that's it for today. All right. Later. Thank you, Diverter. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Diverter.